chat uh, our pre-class survey. So if everybody has a moment, um, feel free to just click that link and fill out that survey. It'll just take more, no more than two minutes. Um, and we will get going here shortly. We're going to give everybody a couple more minutes to join us. Um, <clears throat> one thing uh, Gay and I were just talking about is how amazing this dish is. Uh, feel free at any time to raise your hand, and we'd love to hear a question or a comment. Uh, you can also put those questions in the chat, um, and Gay will answer those to the best of her ability. Um, we also love to see photos, uh, maybe during, after. Um, it's always awesome to see what everybody creates. Um, and I think a great reminder, too, that cooking is all about experimentation, right? We, we learn skills, but we also have the opportunity to experiment with the skills that we learn. So nobody has to be perfect. Uh, I certainly am not a perfect cook or chef. Uh, I wouldn't even consider myself a chef. Um, but the best part is you try and you have fun. Um, so what we'll do is, again, feel free to click that link there in the pre-class survey. Um, and we will get started here for our amazing dish. I am first going to spotlight Tamika. And I will get it over. Oops, sorry. Shoot it over to you, Chef Tamika. Thank you, Alex. Always great to be here with the Elevate Youth team. I think we can still say Happy New Year, or at least welcome to 2024. And always good to see you all. As Alex and Kate were talking, this is a super packed um, nutrient dense, meaning pretty heavy in nutrients. Um, a three chili bean, uh, a three bean chili rather. And I'm super excited because as usual, cooking is more of an art than science, which means you as an artist can interpret as you wish. And the recipe is a guide. So just to kind of run through our plan for this evening, as usual, we're going to talk through our items or our produce or ingredients or mise en place, recipe check, just make sure we have everything we need. Um, tonight's recipe offers you two options. If you'd like to do chili with meat, which is chili con carne, as they say in the South, or without. I'm going to do a non-meat option. And so the recipe does give you an option for meat. If you are doing that, maybe sh a show of hand if you're adding some meat. Otherwise, again, very high in protein. I'll be going the option of a non-meat option just because I like to have it that way with a bowl of rice or by itself. So let's start by seeing how folks are feeling. Thumbs up if you're ready to dive in. If you're off camera and you can, it would be nice to see your faces. It just feels like we're in the same room together. So if you are able to be on camera, even for a little bit, we do welcome that. Of course, do what makes the most sense for you. All right, shall we dive in? All right, so we're gonna write through a recipe for our three bean chili. And as usual, recipe is written in the way you use items ideally. And as I offer you instruction, as in what we're about to do, I'll also offer you some information about each of these items when it's appropriate. If there is an instruction or a step that you've missed, Gay, who wave, who's having her water, maybe, um, can put that in the chat for you. But always come off mute and ask for questions. Again, we're going by the pace of the group. If you have more questions, please feel free to, in the chat, ask the question. All right, shall we dive in? Great. So we're going to start with our ingredients check, just to make sure we have everything that we need. Um, your olive oil. So I have a big old bottle, but then you only need about two tablespoons. Um, it asks for a large sweet onion. I'm using a red onion. A sweet onion ideally is a white or yellow onion. I think that's what you might have in your box. But I'll share a secret with you. I am going to use a bunch of items that were in my fridge left over because a chili is a good way to not waste food meaning you use items you have in your fridge, you can toss them in. So I'm gonna use a half a red onion, but you may have a sweet, which is a white or yellow onion in your box. So I have a red onion, you can use what makes more sense based on what's in your box. Do folks have that? We're also gonna ask for a crushed peeled garlic. Oh, I lost my garlic. My garlic was here, but it's gone. Okay, here's my garlic. Your garlic, I'm gonna ask for folks to also have cumin. So I kind of put all my spices together in a bowl. So I have my cumin 
Um, cumin smells earthy to me. It adds a really sweetness, but also some earthiness in this chili. Um, chili powder, I have that as well, kind of a red spice here. It acts for cacao powder, which is unsweetened on purpose, and I'll kind of talk you through why. Some folks do cacao powder, others do coffee, but those two items, which may be a breakfast drink, you're like, what is it doing in the chili? It really offers sweetness, but also earthiness. And I'm not sure who was the first person who did this. It pulls all the flavors together. So the tomatoes, the beans, somehow coffee or cacao powder does this magic trick and makes it all blend nicely. But it also adds depth of color and flavor because it's really dark and rich. And I'm using unsweetened cacao powder that I use for baking um, and for my various recipes. All right, chipotle powder. Now I'm gonna be fair, I don't have chipotle powder. I actually have chipotle peppers myself, right? But you should have chipotle powder. Again, this is a smoky um, pepper. It does have some heat, so I'd say go really light and you can adjust as needed. I don't mind the heat, so I'll throw an entire chili, I'm sorry, chipotle pepper in this. It also adds for diced green chilies. I have a jalapeno here. I'm almost do you see and dice? It asks for bell pepper. Again, going back to my food waste, I am going to use this from a salad from earlier this week. And then it also asks for carrots to be shredded. I have three tiny ones here. They were in the back of my fridge. And my second to last produce item is tomatoes. Now you may have in your box crushed or diced tomatoes. Is that true that folks have Correct. that? Yep. Okay, and I am not going to use mine because I like to hold on to this for, you know, the winter months. But I had some tomatoes I bought a few weeks ago and they're not looking so good, right? They've been in the fridge. Again, a chili is a good recipe to not waste your produce, but anything that's not so pretty can go nicely into a chili. So these tomatoes are perfectly fine. They're just not so pretty, right? They're a little dry so they go right into my chili so i'm gonna just really talk us through making sure we don't waste food as well um and the last three items which are the star of the dish is or are your beans now this is a three bean chili right so it's packs a punch black beans classic red kidney beans and then also i have white navy beans again three different depths of colors flavors textures even three different sizes. Mines are all cooked, but again, these are all high in protein. I'm gonna guess if I remember correctly, the kidney beans might be the highest in protein, but these are good in protein, but also in fiber and various nutrients. So if you're trying to have a plant-based diet, again, ground beef or ground meat will be good in this, but by itself, it's a whole dish or a whole protein with a grain like rice or quinoa, it's really one of the most full meals you can have. A plant-based, protein-packed chili with a grain, that's a full, rice and beans, classic, full meal that keeps you in these nice winter months, right? Keeps you nice and warm because all that fiber really keeps your tummy full for a long time. And my last item is your broth. Now, I made this on Sunday. I had some veggie peels. I put them in a in the stove um, in some water and I boiled it for a few, it simmered for a few hours. So I made my own broth, but I think you have a beef broth. Everybody or has a, a bone broth, which also I featured just so people have that experience. It's also very high in protein yep. um, and a lot, you know, a lot of, a lot of goodness in that broth. So what they yeah. don't use, they can, they can sip on or put in a soup or a stew or anything and even freeze. If you don't use it today, you can freeze it. And bone broth can be made from the carcasses. I mean, chicken bones, neck bones, whatever animal bones that you can find. If you did turkey this holiday and you ripped off all the meat, that carcass or those bones can go into a pan with onion peels and you know pieces of peppers and carrots and so on and make a beautiful broth. Slow, easy cooking. So with that said, how are we doing with all our ingredients? I'm gonna use, thank you for the thumbs up. I'm gonna use silence as folks are ready to dive in. So you may have already chopped your onions. If you haven't done so, I'm gonna go ahead and just prep mine. Maybe you've already done this, 
There was a video that was sent out that showed you just a little bit of prepping. Again, an onion um, has a root where it grew from the earth. It also has a top that becomes chives later on. You wanna remove both of them. And then this can again go into a stock or broth. And I'm gonna peel my onions. Maybe you already have this done, maybe you don't, but I'm gonna go ahead and just talk through the recipe while I get this prepped. It's good to have a little trash can nearby for your compost items to be compost. And the way I like to do an onion is I have flat sides. Um, maybe not everybody here has seen the Excel spreadsheet. Have you rows and columns, right? Or like the back of my door, rows and columns. Look, inspiration is everywhere. The idea is I'm gonna try and mimic kind of like that door, but more narrow based on my onion. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through my rows first. And again, ask an, uh, ask an onion, ask an adult <laughs> in your home to help you do this. So I made those openings and then I'm gonna go ahead and slice down in my rows. I'm gonna protect my fingers here. And then I have kind of like that window pane in the back, right? And then I'm gonna use my fingers, my knuckle as a protection and I'm gonna slice down. So I have these beautiful, again, not perfection, but I have these beautiful blocks of onions. Again, I've been doing this for some time. So I kind of like, you know, figured out how to do this. My first few times were not very pretty, right? So practice doesn't make perfection, it makes excellence. So you keep going at this for some time. So that's my onions. Maybe folks have already gone through this. Maybe they haven't. Um, how about our carrots? Again, I can slow my roll, but again, maybe folks already had this done. I won't go through each item just to make sure we're on the same page. My carrots- They all received the world's largest carrots I've ever seen in their boxes. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. I have tiny carrots, right? And there are a few ways I could do this. I have a veggie peeler, and so I'm gonna remove the skin. Um, I tend to go towards me, I should go away from me. And, and I might add, because they're so large, although the recipe calls for, for two carrots, normally, you know, they would be smaller. So everybody should, maybe you can just give them a ballpark of how much to add. Um, I like to use a cup-ish, so like this much. Um, I'll tell you, I'm going to make this recipe in a half for myself because I'm only a single person eating this. But if you have a really large carrot, I say one or two is plenty. I'm going to do these three just because mine are maybe tiny. Again, like with any recipe, you're looking for things to be based on your preference. If carrots are your favorite, maybe you add more carrots. If carrots are not your favorite, maybe you add less carrots, right? So just to prep the carrots, I remove the tops and I remove the roots. And there are a few ways you could do your carrots. The recipe asks for shredded, so I could use a box braider and I could shred this right? And make like really tiny pieces. You can do rounds. Nice and bite size. You're looking for sizes you can like fit on. So I'm having my chili and maybe a few of these can fit on when it's cooked. It's going to be smaller. Or maybe you can go a little bit fancier, what's called a julienne, which is the idea is to open your carrot into almost like little sticks, right? And we won't spend too much time here, but the idea is to get these beautiful little sticks of sorts. Now, would this fit on my spoon? Maybe not, right? So, oh, the camera's here. Maybe not. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these smaller. The idea is you're gonna kind of think through how you eat this chili. And so make sure to kind of think through making your sizes. After they've cooked, they'll be smaller, but this might be too big for a stew or chili, and this might be just good. I also want to think about the other items I've chopped and make sure they're somewhat similar. I'm going to pause here because maybe folks, the last time folks had already prepped items, so I want to make space for any prep work you've already done. And maybe by your show of thumbs up or reactions, either real thumbs or virtual thumbs. If you have all your veggies prepped and you're ready to go. And by all, I mean your carrots are ready, your onions have been peeled and chopped, your garlic is ready, 
your beans are opened and drained. Oh, that's super important. I drained my beans. When I opened my beans, I had a little colander. I drained them, but I also rinsed my bean. I rinsed my bean because I like to adjust my salt, my sodium intake. I like to add my own salt. So I rinsed mine because most dried, sorry, most beans or canned items have a decent amount of sodium or salt. Okay, I'm seeing one person's only chopped onions. That's okay, keep working. That's a good place to start. Have others finished up? Thank you for that, for letting us know. All right, I'm looking at our time. I want us to start getting our pan heated. Now this chili recipe, the longer it cooks, the more delicious it becomes. So we may not finish the entire recipe together. We should have all items in our pan, but we may not have it completely cooked. And that's completely okay. Um, each person's stove top is different, but I'm gonna get us started on, well, first straightening my, oh, straighten my phone. That makes more sense, right? Than to straighten them. How's, how's that? <laughs> okay. So how about folks who are still chopping, you keep working, no rush here, take your time, prep all those items. For folks who are ready, I'd say assemble, again, mise en place, make sure all your items are ready to go. Because once you get started, it goes pretty quickly, right? I'm gonna take my little tiny pan because this is what I'm choosing today. And so while folks are getting ready, um, a stock pot or a heavier pot, is ideal for this. I'm using a tiny one because again, I'm making like two servings for myself. Um, great. So I'll get my pan on, it's gonna be heated. So while I'm talking through that, again, show of hands if you need more space and time to prep. But if you're moving along with me, I'd say put your stove, sorry, put your pan on your stove top, uh, medium heat. Again, if you go from one to 10 on your stove top or from high to low, you're looking for the middle number, five it should be ideal. And then have your olive oil nearby. You also wanna have a spatula or wooden spoon or something to stir your items nearby. Again, the more prepared you are, the better your product, it just works that way. Pause in for questions. All right, so while I'm waiting for my pan to heat, uh, does anyone know where chilies, ch ch I keep saying chili like the country, chilies come from, not the peppers, but this dish. So a bean chili, who was the first or where was the first region that started making this wonderful hearty stew? Peru? I have no idea. <laughs> no idea, okay. Well, it's actually quite local, right? So most countries have a bean-based dish, but the South of America, Texas, right? The Texan border, because Mexico has such a rich history of beans and tomatoes and peppers and Texas being right near as a neighbor. It was in Texas that they initially found that this recipe was being made by mostly women on the side of the street. They call them the chili queens. And so it wasn't meat at the time. It was mostly beans, sorry, it wasn't beans. It was mostly meat and beans were added later on. So again, it was called chile con carne, which is with meat. And over time, people have evolved into different recipes. So it's a very Southwest American dish. Great guess. All right, so my onions are ready. Our folks ready. I'm gonna start assembling our dish. So again, if you need more space and time, I'm not hearing any questions, which means people are probably really busy working. I forgot my garlic, so I'll get that done first. Now I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna talk us to the recipe. So if you're following along, make sure all your veggies are prepped and ready. You're gonna add your tablespoon of olive oil. And then mine's smoking actually, I'm gonna turn it off. And we're gonna move very quickly, right? So first your onions, your peppers, and your carrots go in. Again, these are all three very hard veggies, which means they're similar in texture and they can go in all at once. I'm gonna pour mine in. A little sizzle there. And while I have that sizzling, I actually didn't cut my green onion, my green fruit. And the idea here is to saute, so to sweat them. And how is that different? You're not trying to caramelize or make them brown. 
you're trying to maintain, you know, that translucent because it goes from like being very heavy, very thick to being lighter in color. We're not trying to brown them at all. So maybe tossing them over and over will help you achieve that. So my onions are in. I'll put my green peppers in as well and my carrots. Now the method we're using here, we're gonna sweat our veggies, which means we're gonna soften them up. These veggies that we're using, they're all, they're collectively called aromatics. Have folks heard that term before? They smell good. They add flavor, they add smell, they add this beautiful taste as a base to most dishes. Oh, I have steam. Can folks see that? Yeah. And they're it's aromatic. The I'm sorry? It's the sweat. <laughs> it's the sweat, yeah. They're aromatic, meaning they add aroma, right? They infuse aroma. So most foods or traditions have the aromatics that they use. The French use like carrots and celery and onions. In the South, it tends to be peppers, bell, um, bell peppers, onions, and celery. Some folks may use a sofrito. So each culture has a base that they use for most of their dishes. So my aromatics are going. Um, I'm gonna wait for folks if they have any comments or questions. Again, the best way to adjust your flame, you can adjust it lower and then turn it up if you need to. Uh, it likes us to start with a lower flame and increase as needed. It's really easy to adjust a lower flame. It's really hard to adjust it if it's gone too far or your product is burnt, right? Nobody wants a burnt dish. So slowly build those flavors. All right, so this is gonna go for about three to five minutes or so. The garlic's already in here on my end. And this stuff is super important. I'm again, pausing to make sure I'm not losing anyone. How are you doing? Okay. So my aromatics, the aromas, right? The base of the dish. And I'm gonna add my spices. I combine all my spices. And you can add all your spices here. You could add, add a half. But the idea here is called you're blooming your spices. So if you remember, I need some more oil. Oops, I'm gonna kind of control mine. I was a little bit too low on my oil. The idea here is that spices are what? The barks, the seeds, the flowers, various parts of a plant, right? But these items were cool. They were in your pantry, right? It's winter in New England. So they were really, really cold. And so to wake them up, you add them to the heat and to the fat, which is the oil, and you bloom them. You wake them up, you make them vibrant again. You bring out all the flavor in them. So the aromatics went in, the spices went in, you toss them, you bloom the spices, you made those two items come together and you have a beautiful base for your dish. Pause in here. Okay, any questions? So the two steps we used was to saute our aromatics and then to bloom our spices. And those sound like very fancy terms, but again, this is, tends to be how most folks make a dish anyway. We're a quiet bunch tonight. It's a sign that we're doing pretty well. It's a sign that we're super busy. It's a sign that we're advanced and we have this. Any questions? Okay, I will not interrupt our working chefs. I'm just, I'm just getting ready to pour my veggies in. Also, what uh -huh. foods help with your brain? What foods help smarten your brain? Like what Great. vegetables? Great question. Now, I'm a medical doctor, so I'd say most fruits and veggies and as natural as possible. 
So the more natural food comes from the earth, it's untouched, it's not processed, it's not salted, it's not sweetened, it's not fried. I think that boosts your overall health, right? So we don't have an overall health more than anything else. Um, but I'd be very careful to think any one food goes directly to the brain. I think you want to think about your brain being healthy. You get fresh air. You have healthy feelings. You eat lots of fruits and veggies. You eat a balanced meal. Maybe avoid lots of sugar and lots of candy. I love that. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Again, I'm not qualified to answer that question fully, but that was my that's my thought. Okay, stand back. Whoa. All right, folks. So while we're here, I just want to add my tomatoes to my dish, but I want to pause here and maybe you're asking yourself, why is there chocolate or cacao rather in this dish? And so you may already realize it adds beautiful color, right? You see how dark that is? It adds really beautiful color to this dish. So my tomatoes are in. Again, your tomatoes might be from a can. N canned veggies usually are picked at perfect, I think, at peak performance. And then they're immediately either um, cooked all the way through or freeze or flash frozen. And they went into a can. So they're really, really healthy options or good options if you don't have a fresh vegetable. I just happen to have lots of tomatoes nearby. So I threw some, some tomatoes in. I want to pause to make sure we're on the same page with all the items that are in your produce. So just repeat, we sauteed our aromatics, which is our onions, our peppers. Who stop hitting the camera, Tamika? Our carrots. We sauteed all those in olive oil. We also went ahead and added the spices. So your cumin, chili powder, cacao powder, chipotle powder. And you make sure that coats the vegetables very fully to release all the flavors of the spices. Again, it's called blooming your spices. Once that was done, we paused. I added my tomatoes because I was ready for them. I want to wait here just to make sure we're all on the same page before we add our beans. Gabriel, did you have a question? Thought I'd seen a hand raised, but. If anyone has questions, feel free to ask. Yes. After the chilies, do I add the tomatoes? Yep, your tomatoes go next. And okay. I like the taste. The whole like can? The... Pardon me? The whole can? Uh, yes, the whole, whole can. I'm going to double check just because I'm using fresh tomatoes, but I think you have enough. Uh, Two cans, correct. Okay. We only have one can. You only have one can? Okay, you're on mute right now. I missed that. You only have one can of what? Tomatoes. Oh, there there should be two cans in there. Uh, most of the, the basics boxes had two cans of tomatoes in them that you got last time, the staple box. But um, I don't know what to tell you if there's only one can in there. Well, if you only have one can, we you can add more broth, really. Reduce to... your broth, actually. Okay. okay, thanks, Gay. So tomatoes went in. I'm going to go ahead and taste my um, product at this point. And the reason I'm tasting it, because you've made a base for a dish, a base meaning a flavor bomb almost. So very concentrated. See how super thick this is? So all your flavors are in here. And you want to taste that to make sure it's adjusted nicely. Mine's very spicy because I added extra spice. And this is where imagination comes in. You're going to taste that base. And imagine when you add your beans, because you know how beans are like blank slates or like empty canvases. You're going to kind of think through, hmm, will this be good with my beans or do I need more flavor? There's still space to adjust it later on. We're going to start working on you developing your own palate to make sure you know how to adjust your spices as you need it. So mine's pretty good the way it is for me. One option here, again, based on your family's need, you can sprinkle a tad bit of salt and pepper. 
I don't need it because I like it this way. I have lots of flavor, but not super salty. But again, if you'd like to, salt and pepper could be added here. Or if you have a, a particular flavor you'd like to add here, it could go in. All right, I think we're all on the same page and I'm gonna go again with my beans. So again, I have three kinds of beans. Um, I'm not sure what white bean you have. I have small navy beans. I wonder why they're called navy beans. Hmm, I don't know the answer to that. I have red kidney beans. And I know why they're called red kidney beans because they look like the shape of your somebody. Kidney. Thank you. Thank you. It's shaped like your kidneys. And then black beans are literally really dark, almost a black or lacking color. And black beans are really good in mostly Latin flavored food. You know, there's like um, black bean stew, black bean soup. So again, these are all fiber packed, protein packed. And I'm going to go ahead and put my beans in. Let's go. Again, to walk us through instruction, at this point, most of your ingredients are in and you made that base. And now you're going to use that base to cover or coat all this wonderful bean. My pan is so small. I'm really committed to making a single serving for myself. But I'm going to go ahead and stir using my spatula or wooden spoon to make sure every piece of my bean has a little bit of that flavor, right? The cumin the cacao, the chipotle, the, the um, sorry, I missed the pepper. What do we have in here? Chili and the tomato and the onions and the garlic and the green peppers. So every single bean in my pan gets a little bit of love. Once I'm sure all the beans got some love and the love sure. means all the spices and flavors. Sorry, because I got to put this in. We didn't. So my bean pretty much is a paste at this point, right? How's it become a chili? I'm gonna add some stock or some broth. Again, in my case, I just made this on Sunday. Um, you have a measurement. You're looking ideally to, oh, there we go. Fully immerse, all your beans need to be covered, right? So you have the perfect measure. But for those folks, please pay attention. If you didn't have two cans of tomatoes, you're going to adjust and maybe put a little bit of broth in first and make sure you're not too thin. Thin meaning we're not looking to make a soup, right? A soup would be less beans. Well, I should do this. Less beans and more liquid. A chili or a stew, you want to have lots of beans and density, meaning like there's something to put on your spoon. So I'm looking for probably, this is where math comes in, maybe a quarter inch or a half inch of liquid above my beans. And folks, on my end, that's it. I have enough liquid covering all my beans. I have my base, I have my beans in. It smells amazing. I'm gonna make sure I scrape them all the sides. Don't wanna waste any of this really good stuff. I'm going to check my recipe one more time just to be sure because even at my stage of doing this several times, I like to use my reference guide, which is my recipe. So just to re repeat where we are, you prepped your veggies, you sauteed those in oil, your aromatics, they smell really good for three or five minutes. Then you add your garlic, your veggies, they cook those through. You add all your spices, your cumin, chili powder, cacao powder, chipotle. You made sure you bloom those spices in the fat to make sure they covered all your veggies. You woke them up. And then you add your tomatoes. You add all your beans. And just to be sure, your beans were drained, right? So we're not adding the liquid from our beans. That would be too much liquid. That would be soupy. So you're going to drain your beans. And if you'd like, you can also rinse your beans. And once you add your beans... Just to be sure, you tasted that product. You made sure to blend all your beans. It went all the way through. So your beans had some of the color from the chili, some of the color from the cumin. It had some of the tomatoes on it. It had some of the onions on it. And you add your stock or your bone broth. 
just enough to cover, I like to say a half an inch or so. Too much liquid would be soupy. So about a half inch. And then I covered it down. I'm gonna reduce my heat from five in my case to about a three. So once I have that boil, and again, a boil is that big bubbles. I wanna reduce it so it can start to simmer and simmer are smaller bubbles, right? So imagine a boil is like you shouting and simmer is more of an inside voice. So once I went to a boil, I'm gonna reduce it ooh, even more. So it starts to simmer. Slow and easy allows all those flavors that were separate to be combined. I'm gonna pause because I see lots of action happening. I like to see action happening. I see people sprinkling things. Some folks I can't see and I wish I could see them and that's okay, but I still wish I could see them. Are there any questions while I clean up? I'm going to open my pan just to kind of have you see. Ooh, can't see. Still reduce. Ready. Pardon me? How do you know when it's ready? Oh, great question. So all the items, I'm going to give you a longish answer because we have time and space. Most of the items that went into your dish were already cooked. The beans were cooked, right? So this is a yep. fast track, semi-homemade way to make a chili. So the items were cooked. The onions and peppers and so on, they were mostly cooked by now because you saute them. So the idea of when it's ready is when those flavors have been blended together. The recipe says 20 minutes or so, 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Um, yep, 20 to 30 minutes. To be fair, in 10 minutes it's cooked. But the longer the time is the more those beans will start to break up and give you some body or some consistency. And the more those tomatoes talk to those beans, talk to those cumin. So time in this dish is not to cook the items, it's to um, infuse the flavors for longer. And then the longer it cooks, the more starch makes it thicken that sauce. So right now I have a, ooh, a spoon. Right now it's I have chili. consistency, right? That's not chili, that's soup. The longer the steak, the more the starch and the fibers in this bean breaks apart to thicken my chili naturally. Excuse so long me. answer is it's probably cooked right now. Was it delicious? Not yet. Is it consist the consistency right? Not yet. Thanks Excuse me. Yes, please. Uh, we're a little behind. After you put the vegetables in, what do you put in there? Okay, so tell me where you are. The vegetables meaning your carrots, mm -hmm. onions, and peppers? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And In have you sauteed those for three or five, three to five minutes or so? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yes. And do you have... And then what next? And then what next? So next you have your spices. So I had a tiny bowl with spices. I had my cumin. I had my chili powder. I had my cacao powder. The cocoa. Cocoa powder. Mm -hmm. I'm missing one, yeah. there's a lot of powder. So all your powdered seasonings, all your powdered And spices. what about the bone broth? Not yet. So you have those spices and those go in and they're sauteed to bloom them, to wake them Gosh. up. And you have a dark, thick paste of sorts. And Josh, I don't know if you put your garlic in yet, but you could add that also if you didn't. I did. We added that. Oh. I did. Okay, great. Thank you, Gay. Yeah. If you bloom your spices and anyone else who's anywhere in there, again, we're making space here for you. I went fast because I've done this a few times and also want to make space that I'm available to you to answer questions. I also made when do we put the beans in? So once you're, you when, spend some time to saute, Josh, I'm going to answer you. Once you spend some time to saute 
all the veggies and the powdered spices for about two or so minutes. Then your tomato goes next. So your can of diced tomatoes goes next. And the idea here is to keep layering on the flavors. So with every new ingredient, you're gonna you're gonna make sure you stir or toss rather to incorporate all those bits and pieces. It's a slow build. My chili is cooking, but you have to. Okay, Ayume. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Your chili is cooking. Um, good to have you. Enjoy. And if you can, please send pictures. Even though you're gone, we'd love to see the pictures um, to the Elevate Youth team. And thank you for being here with us in community. We appreciate it. Is it over? Is it over? Okay, Joshua. Okay. How are you going? Is it over? No. Pour your tomato sauce in. Other families having questions. I see lots of movement, which looks like lots of activity. Oh, there I go. I have a simmer. I have a simmer. Chef Tamika, how long can you keep chili for? Oh, chili is one of those things that can be frozen. It stays in the fridge. I tend not to like my food in the fridge more than a week. After a week, some of those beans might start releasing some not so pleasant out odor. But I think after this, if it cools down, I have containers like these chef containers and I also have glass jars. I like to portion it out and it goes into the freezer. I've kept chili for two or three months, but I also like to keep things in my freezer in case of emergency. But chili is one of those dishes that really stores well because all the items are cooked together. It lends itself to be able to be defrosted and then in the microwave, if you have one, or in a stove, if you have one, it doesn't change the flavor. I'd say maybe freshen the flavor up once it's out of the freezer. Maybe add some more spices. Maybe add some fresh cilantro or whatever um, fresh spices you have. Great question. Chili can be shipped, sent around the world. All right, Joshua, how are you doing over there? Are tomatoes in? We're doing good. Do we have to put the beans in? After, after the tomatoes. So once the tomatoes are sautéed and those spices cover everything, mm -hmm. the beans go in next and same process. Make right. sure you toss the beans to cover with all those delicious spices. And Joshua, don't forget to taste it, right? Just to make sure it's to your liking. Okay. I'd love to hear we're doing good. That was a I great response. Any other families have questions or want to show where the, where they are or how they're doing? I'm still clean up on my end. And these scraps I have, again, they're gonna about to go into a pan with some water and they're about to become stock for my next dish. I, I put this in the freezer. Yeah. I just make this every time I have somewhat waste. All right. So while I clean, not hearing any questions, and my chili is going, again, at this point, we're using all our senses. We're going to smell, right? All those flavors going together. We're going to look and make sure that our thickness has changed. In my case, I probably should not have held that pan that was hot. Please have an adult do that with you. Again, I see some good looking chili going there. Ooh, I do too. Yes. So again, it's cooked, but making sure that all those flavors work together. This is soup consistency. Again, the longer it sits, is the more it becomes a chili. If you really want to um, fast track the process, you could take a spoon and mash um, your beans. But you know what? Let's just make sure we spend the time and have it go nice and slow. All right, while I'm cleaning up, are there any other questions? All right. So if folks don't have questions, 
I'm going to assume we're doing pretty well. And I was telling the Elevate team that this recipe was very nostalgic for me, not because of the chili only, but because of the, the chocolate or the cocoa powder. And so I have a chance to pull out a few things from my pantry. The same way you guys have a nice pantry box, given my line of work, I have an expansive pantry with lots of things that I collect. So I pulled out a few different kinds of chocolate products or cocoa products. And I wanted to talk them through the way I kind of shared with my little one. I have six different products here, all chocolate or cocoa based. And do folks know where what this item on here, can you see that? That shape thingy, that fruit of sorts? Have folks seen that before? Okay, the cow plant, right? It's a fruit. It's a fruit, oh my God, similar to what? It has pulp on the inside. It has seeds on the inside. It has this really thick stick um, skin. And so as a child growing up in Jamaica, my grandpa planted cacao. Jamaican colloquial term, we call it cocoa. So he had a cocoa walk, which was an entire, like maybe half an acre of just this. It was just beautiful to walk through pick one, even though you weren't supposed to, trip it open and just eat the inside, right? So that's what it came from, the cow plant. But then how does this become chocolate? Well, that same grandpa, he's still alive. He sends me these little balls that he makes by hand. And he sends them with anyone who was willing to take them to the US for me. And what this is, is this plant, that he opens up, he takes the pods out, he dries it in the sun, and then he has a thing called a mortar and pestle where he pounds it, and it's very oily, very fatty, co cocoa butter, and he makes it with his palm of his hands, he rolls that cocoa into his little balls, and he sends them to me. It's not sweetened, it's not anything, it's literally just rolled cocoa balls. And so my son was asking me, how come it doesn't look like this? But these are several stages. So we use a powder today that was unsweetened. It was again, pressed out, crushed into a powder or refined into a powder. I also have unsweetened chocolate bars that goes into my baking products. I have chocolate sticks that goes into my drinking. I mean, not to critique, this is my least favorite. It has tons of sugar and probably doesn't look as close to chocolate as most of the others. But again, um, hot cocoa mix is some amount of chocolate and lots and lots and lots of milk and lots of sugar. If this is your favorite, I'm not critiquing. I'm just saying it's a little bit more removed from being chocolate than you probably know. So if you have time and you have a chance in the store, to look for actual chocolate sticks and add your own milk and sugar if you choose, because this beautiful plant that's grown in the tropics, so in the Caribbean, in parts of Africa, um, in Latin America, people really spend lots of time and energy to make this into chocolate for us. So chocolate comes in lots of forms. And you may ask why it's in Chile, because again, the Latin tradition, being from Mexico, the border, it's a very important crop to that area. So. That was my show and tell because my grandpa makes these and they, he sends them to me. So if folks ever wonder where chocolate came from, it came from this beautiful pod that's also delicious to eat. That's the end of my show. <laughs> and if folks even have their own stories, I'd love to hear your own stories. But again, with every ingredient that we eat, if we can be thoughtful and kind of think about consuming it in as natural a state as possible, that isn't always possible for lots of reasons, but you want to think through what you're eating and the more whole it is, most of the more delicious and more nutritious it is as well. All right, that gave us lots of time to see lots of chilies being cooked all the way through. How are folks doing?
My son couldn't wait, so I actually had to give him a ball. <laughs> That's a great sign. Seriously. <laughs> May I see what they're having? Let me see. I mean, I, I'm trying to change my background because right now it looks like it's blurred, so you really can't see uh -huh. that well. But this is what I already took up a serving out of it. And it's pretty good. It's I think consistency is pretty good. Great. Great I, I love I, when someone can't wait to have food. <laughs> well, and it'll be fun to see if when he has the second dish a little bit later, if it tastes it, any different for having good. had yep. longer to sit, you know? That's true. And I cheated. I put a little cheese on top because Oh, that's not cheating. We have a whole section of the end that offers you options, right? So okay. the, yep. on the last page, it says season to taste with salt and pepper as you wish. And if you want more heat, you add more chili. I'm going to add jalapenos to mine because I really like jalapenos. But okay. also Greek yogurt or if you have sour cream, if that's your thing, you can add chili or fresh cilantro on top. Okay. Yeah. And I, was just, just like there. I had some dry thyme. So I just put some in just because I had it. Again, art versus science. You're the artist. You paint <laughs> as you wish. And your taste bud and my taste buds are completely different. So do what makes the most sense for your palate and for your family. But thanks for sharing. Really appreciate that. Okay. Anyone else before I hand back to the Elevate Youth team? We're ready to show ours. In the park. Just pick it up and show the park. I clean them. Let's see it, Josh. Oh, wow. Looking good. Beautiful. I so see those round. Those, okay. those, we add some like flavoring, like a little pinch of salt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know where to get some. <laughs> I You're love it. Just paint as you wish. I think that's my favorite part of cooking is once I knew enough to have the confidence to just start experimenting. So oh. I love it. I love add a little time, add a little, you know, something that you think might taste good at it and give it a try. Gabriel, yours looks really good too. You want to show us? Thank you. I love her sitting in the kitchen. A sign of joy. Beautiful. Great work, everyone. I'm starving now. Me too. I got smart this week and cooked ahead. So when we were done, I'd have something to eat. Because every time we have this class, I'm so hungry by the time it's over. <laughs> that is true. That is true. All right. I'm going to hand that over to the... But team, Alec, uh, Alec, over to you. I'm going to grab my bowl because I'm about to be ready to have my chili. I have some rice ready for this. I have my jalapenos ready. I have some shredded cheese. So again, it's always, always a pleasure to share community with you. Again, I'm only a guide. You guys have lots and lots of thoughtful insight to share. And we love seeing your photos of what came out. So thank you for being here and for showing up. Take care. Slam dunk. Thank you, Jamaica. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff, Tamika. Great work, everyone. Thank uh, you, Tamika. Also, uh, Sophie, will there be a field trip this week with so the Boys and Girls Club? Is a field trip. I think you're first on the wait list, Joshua. When is it? She so, said you want the wait list. Yeah, so it'll be at, at 9 a.m., but so far we're we're full, but I'll email you soon if we have a spot open up. When what what is it gonna be? It's skiing this weekend. Skiing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> skiing and chili go together very well. They do. All right, everyone. Thank you for all your hard work tonight. Feel free I to do. fill out that survey there in the chat. And as always, we'll follow up. We record these so those that can't join us can do it on their own. But of course, if you want to make another uh, amazing bean chili dish, uh, you can find that on, on the Elevate Youth website. 
So thank you, everyone. We look forward to seeing everybody's pictures. Big round of applause to everyone here in Chef Tamika. Way to go. Thank you. Enjoy it. Thank you, Chef Tamika. Nice job, chefs. <laughs>